Shalom and welcome, all my brothers and sisters. Any of you who are here for the first time or are new to my channel, I thank you so much for your time, and I hope you'll subscribe to my channel today. I have many, many teachings, and God willing, uh, with His blessings, I will be able to help many more. We're going to speak a little bit about the psychological uh, obsession with the rabbinical view of need for the oral Torah, as they call it. We know as the Talmudic teachings of the Mishnah, and so on and so forth. That without the teachings of the rabbis written in the Talmud and the Midrash, without those interpretations, the Torah is but a skeleton. This is the claim. This is uh, one of the many teachings, is that you can't understand the Torah without the oral Torah. Now, for those of you who are not familiar, Rabbinical Judaism, or Orthodox Judaism, what is originally referred to as Pharisaical Judaism, the bottom line belief is that there was two revelations given at Mount Sinai. There was the written Torah, which is the written words within the Torah, the five books of Moshe, and there was an oral Torah, which means there was a second revelation. So two definitive revelations, the written and the oral. One was written down, the baseline, bottom lines, and the oral Torah was the secret codified instructions of how to carry out the keeping of the Torah, the details and the information, things that they believe and they are taught are not found within the written words of the Torah itself. It needs to be explained, it needs to be ciphered through the teachings of the rabbis. It is common within the rabbinical uh, belief system that the claim that the Torah is but a skeleton, like I mentioned earlier. The framework of the Jewish faith, that the Torah is a skeleton. Being the skeleton, they further claim it needs the blood and the flesh. So you have a skeleton. The Torah, literally, is like a skeleton. It's wonderful, it's holy, it's beautiful. But the Torah by itself is merely a skeleton. You need the blood and the flesh to make it vibrant and living. So therefore, they can call it a skeleton, but yet embellish it and make it sound beautiful when they say, but you need the blood and the flesh to make it whole and living. The oral law, the oral Torah as they call it, the second revelation. Now remember, all Jews, all, all Israelites throughout history since the time of Moshe always understood that there was the written Torah and nothing else, only what was written down. And that was all that was known until rabbinical Judaism came about, Pharisaical Judaism. And yes, it did come about. It was not originated. That's not the original form of real Israelite way and the real Judaism. Now, I have so much respect and adoration for my brothers and sisters who have our Orthodox faith. But this is my explanation of Karaite Judaism. Kara, again, is the ancient form of the word or the, the understanding of the word Tanakh, which is really an abbreviation of the Torah, the prophets, and the writings. So in ancient Hebrew, kara is the equivalent of Tanakh. So when you say karaite, it's not just a term or a label. It, it's, it's a statement. Kara im, scripturalist, Tanakhite, Hebrew scriptures alone. That's the authority, the written words of Elohim. Of course, the source is Elohim himself, who gave the Tanakh, or Kara. So therefore, to be called a Karaite is not a label. Again, people will look to Karaites and Wikipedia because everything, everybody thinks they're a guru and, a, and an archaeologist or a scholar because they can Google something and say, oh, Karaites came about in the 8th century. No, Karaites are after Pharisaical Judaism. Or the atheist will look, Karaite Judaism, nah, not so impressive. It came about in the 8th century, even later than the Pharisaical movement. But again, this is because ignorance is in internet warriors, as they call them. 
You have to do real research, real study of the books. Real research, not Google. Again, Karaite Judaism is just a term that was placed upon us and we gave ourselves to identify ourselves separate from the movement of the Pharisaical Jewish uh, sect that came about of this belief in the oral Torah. Man-made traditions put aside in the Talmudic teachings of the rabbis, the Pharisaical uh, Jews. It was a statement to say, no, we are Karaim, Tanachites. We follow the scriptures. We do not believe in this oral uh, secret translation given to Moshe at Mount Sinai or that we cannot understand the written words without the teachings of the Mishnah and the Talmud, what eventually became the Talmudic teachings. So we were called Karait. We called ourselves Karaim, which came about later. Before that, Karaites or any Jews, any Israelites in the past were always called Zadok, the righteous. That is the actual the root for the name Sadducees, Sadokim, which is Zadok, righteous. So again, all Israelites who kept to the written words of Yehoah were called righteous, Zadok, the righteous ones. Plain English, the righteous ones. That was always the term for Israelites who kept the Torah. You were the unrighteous who didn't keep the Torah and the righteous who kept the Torah among Israel. Not among Gentiles and non-Jews, because we believe that any righteous person who does good things and good deeds and lives to help and be a difference in this world are righteous, Zadok. So, for Israelites, or Israelis, however you want to, however you want to place it, I'm trying to make this uh, very understandable terminology. People of Israel. If you kept the Torah, you were Zadok, righteous. If you did not, and you were Jews or Israelites, you were not Zadok, righteous. Got it? So let's go back to the oral Torah. Without it, it's a skeleton, according to rabbinical Judaism. You cannot understand the Torah without it. it you, you're missing the meat and the, the, the blood, flesh. It's just incomplete. It's a skeleton, okay? You're not whole without it. This is a problem in basic understanding. It's, it's basically a byproduct of a failure to search the scriptures well to find the answers that are held within the written words of Yehoah, within Tanakh, within Kara, the Hebrew scriptures, for the true meaning is found within the scriptures. This is what is the problem. And it's sad because the answers are there. In the absence of such a search, the oral law often comes to erroneous conclusions about the biblical text. It is a great tragedy. Most Jews are told that the Torah is an incomplete document and must be supplemented with this oral accompaniment. This is contrary to the clear teachings of Tanakh itself. In the words of Psalms, inside of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 8, King David wrote, The Torah is perfect. Perfect. Tamim. Now, another root within the word for perfect is complete. Let that sink in for a moment. Perfect and complete. The words of King David ring true to any Karite ears, to any person who fears Yehovah and follows his words within Tanakh. As a result, those students who are genuinely interested in reaching the true meaning of a passage, who are part of rabbinical Judaism, become psychologically dependent on the oral law, psychologically dependent on the teachings within the Talmudic traditions of the oral law. They feel the answers are not contained within the Tanakh. They're just not there. Psychologically, that's what's in their mind. It's just not there. 
within Tanakh itself, and therefore do not undertake the necessary steps to find them within the Tanakh. And that's the biggest problem that I wanted to talk about in this video. The need for an oral law to interpret the commandments thus becomes self-reinforcing, never allowing, never allowing one to search the Tanakh for the answers that are found within. It's very sad. that most of the meaning of the commandments and principles can be determined not by an honest search or study of the Tanakh, but within the teachings, the many, many teachings of the rabbis within the Midrash and the Talmudic teachings of traditions held through many centuries. The things that cannot be determined is the result, at least from a carrot point of view, the things that cannot be determined from an honest search within the scriptures would be, the only thing that we can answer would be the inability to recover the plain meaning of the text, which would have been available to any average Israelite reading the original text itself. But most all of the answers the most important answers can definitely be found within Torah. But again, we have to use common sense and understand, take our 21st century mindset out of it and understand what would an Israelite understand hearing this being read every seven years as the Torah says itself. You must read the Torah in the ears of every man, woman, and child and stranger within Israel every seven years that they may hear, learn, to fear and keep all the words of this Torah. Now how can they keep and fear Yehovah if they don't understand it or can't understand it? It's very obvious by the words within the Torah that you can understand it and learn to keep it and to fear Yehovah. So therefore, I wanted to basically educate those who are listening that being Karaim or a Karite is not a label it's not just something that just came about. It's not a heretical Judaism. It is the true form of Judaism. It is the understanding that everything that was given by Yehovah was in writing. That is a statement. It is not a label. Karaite is a statement. It is not a label. Just like Judaism, real Judaism, Judaism as a whole, to be respectful to all forms. When the term gets thrown around man-made religion, I, I'm not in a man-made religion. I don't want a part of a man-made religion. Again, what man made religion? What man created Judaism? And don't give me the mambo-jambo answers. The truth is no man created Judaism. It all began the Israelite way, came about, at the revelation at Mount Sinai in front of three million people. There is no man-made religion. And it has not stopped the unbroken chain from Mount Sinai till today. So again, whenever people throw out the nonsense claim of a man-made religion, it's just, it's just, forgive me for saying this, it's just complete stupidity and ignorance on the part of the person that says this. What man made this religion? There is no man made religion. So it was when people blurt out these blanket statements, you're in a man made religion. I'm not part of no man made religion. Oh, really? Well, what do you believe? Well, I believe that man made religion is wrong. Okay, again, what do you believe? Well, I have my own way of keeping Torah. Oh, well, really? Well, that's called a cult. No, it's not. Oh, yes, it is. Well, I have my own little group. Oh, okay. That's called a cult. Man-made cult. Oh, it's not man-made. Oh, yeah, it is. Who believes it? Are you a man? Yeah. Well, then it's man-made. You started it. I didn't start it. Yes, you did. What 3,000-year-old group of people say that they kept what you believe? Nobody. So all of Israel is wrong, right? All the Jews are wrong. They've just been keeping this since 3,000 years ago. But you got the answers, right? 
don't fall into this trap. There's just too many heretics out there, too many heretical uh, cults and fake movements. Please don't lose your spirit. Stay strong. Trust in the Hebrew Scriptures. Karaim, Karaites, Israelites, the people that keep to the Hebrew Scriptures, are following the true way. So, don't, don't go away from that. Don't believe that the answers are not found within the Hebrew Scriptures. They are. And don't let labels pollute your mind. Make your brain become filthy. Kara'im, Kara'ite, is not a label. It is a statement. We trust the written words of Yehovah. That's the point. Shalom, and I hope you have a beautiful, blessed day. Rest well. Shalom.